Welcome to our first show of presence, how to live and lead consciously in today's world. I'm Ravi Tangri, and this is my co-creator of this show, Holly Duckworth. Holly? Hello. Good to see you, Ravi. What a joy it is to come together in a great community to chat about conscious living. Uh, I think it's awesome to think about how this conversation is so powerful right now. So many of us are the silently awake. We're, we're really awakening to the highest and best that we can be in our life and in leadership. I know you and I both work with executives uh, to live great lives in their business. And so it was so fun when you reached out to me just 10 days ago to talk about spirituality. And wow, look at us now, 10 days later, we are inviting others to join us in this conversation. Absolutely. And I mean, I, I think you're right in that there's so many people now awakening that there's more than just, um, you know, j than just uh, working for a living, just looking after the family. There's something deeper out there. And there's a huge, been a huge shift in, re well, not just recent years, but in the last couple of decades, away, if you will, from the traditional religions to more of a spiritual approach. And I think it's amazing that awakening that there was a word when we first spoke that you brought that you a phrase you used called silently awake. And that really, really got to me in that I think a lot of people are opening to this. But the challenge now is how do you step out of, you know, it's fine to be able to meditate, it's fine to be able to do, you know, to be in nature, but how do you bring that into life? How do you bring it into the boardroom? How do that you bring it into uh, you know, the kitchen table and, and really live it day to day. And I think that's the challenge that a lot of people today have. Well, and I think that's why we were brought together and why we want to have this show is to create a safe container, a, a conversation each week um, on the questions that we're asking as we look to live and lead and how we're doing this. Uh, you talk about the mountaintops. I live in beautiful Colorado and you know, it's really easy to, to live our lives meditating on the top of the mountain, but it's a lot harder to meditate and live this life in the boardroom. So the show we, we, um, did some of our own. I mean, we, we practiced the presence our, on our own self of, of how the show came to be in terms of we did some visioning and some meditation. So, Ravi, should we share with them why we call the show Presence? Absolutely. Uh, so we um, in, in, our, in our work, ban bantering back and forth, the, the word uh, came up Presence and Presencing. And we were talking about in order to live a conscious life or lead a conscious business, it takes a certain realm of presence, and that's comfortable with yourself. Uh, presence also meaning um, being present in the exact moment. And Ravi and I have made a commitment as we're doing the show to uh, come fully present into this space. We're not texting, we're not emailing, we're not voicemailing. And that's a part of presence. It's a part of learning to live and lead in this particular 24-7 technology environment. And so it's about going within. What's your presence within? And do you remember the other one, Ravi? We had that number six one that we love the most. Presence about, do you remember it? Oh, good Lord. No, it's not coming to me right now. It'll come back. <laughs> presence. 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 Being fully um, available, I think, yeah. is part of it. And leaders need to be able to do that when times are tough and when times are good, too. Well, and I, I think... You know, I know when I walk into a room and there's someone who's fully present, it actually shifts the state of the room. You can feel it when you're walking into into um, their presence, if you will, that there's there's something there that allows people to just sort of go and take a breath and let go. And I think the trouble is when you talk about, say, in the business world, our heads are going through so many problems, blah, 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 blah. The moment we're in our heads, we're not present. And the challenge there is when you're in a meeting, when you're with someone or at home, when you're with your kids, when you're with your significant other, how can you truly just be there? Because we are so used to thinking about everything else that we've got to do that we very rarely are in the moment that we are actually living. Yeah, I wanted to add to uh, for our listeners and for our viewers that um, 
while we come at this from a, a spiritual mindset, that's often a word, a woo woo word or a misunderstood word. And yeah. um, Ravi, I'd certainly invite you to share your definition. But for me, spiritual means honors all paths to the good that you are. So we really want this show to represent a variety of faith paths, faith traditions and spirituality so that we can all be enriched by the good of God, spirit, universe, all of that, that we are. So, um, you know, as we start the show and the conversation, we want everyone to feel welcome here. So Ravi, I'd certainly invite you to share, you know, what's, what's your thoughts on, on spirituality and religion so that we can create a con a, a, some definition around spirituality and consciousness, this thing that we're doing. Yeah. I, I come at it from, from a different, a uh, couple of different angles, if you will. I, to me, spirituality is something that is beyond us. Okay, that there's something more than this this matter that we think we are, uh, and th there there is an intelligence out there that I believe we're part of. I, my first career actually was as a uh, uh, quantum physicist, and so I started to discover that the world isn't the way that we actually think it is. That that in fact none of this is real. We're all just bundles of energy that are just a little more coherent right now in these forms but also that consciousness shifts reality, that in the, in the quantum world, results change the moment you look at them. And the moment you expect something, you can change the results, which is exactly what the new spirituality says. And um, there's a wonderful book by a man by the name of Laszlo called um, Science and the Akashic Field. And he talks about how the universe is full of gravitational fields and electromagnetic fields, but there's also a field of consciousness, which he calls the Akashic field, that we can tune into. And there's a deeper wisdom that we can access there. Um, so for me, the spirituality is stepping outside of these little structures we think we are human and body connecting suit. with that. Hmm? Step out of our human body suit. Yes, the body suits and to, to re realize who we truly are and to connect with what else is out there. And absolutely, for a lot of people, that sounds woo-woo, but it's also, as I say, there's, there's a lot of science that's supporting this as well. Well, in terms of my background, um, I am certainly not a quantum physicist, but uh, we're having a special show next week on, on Thursday instead of Friday because of my graduation, and my licensing panels. Um, I come at this uh, consciousness work from a, a different perspective. I have a bachelor's degree in business management and leadership, uh, went on to work as a certified meeting professional and meet, meeting and events executive. And then an association person. So I come at it from this real business point of view. And then five years ago, I embarked upon a journey to become what we call a prayer practitioner in a tradition called science of mind or religious science, not Scientology, but religious science, uh, which was founded by Ernest Holmes. And uh, we study all world religions. So it's fun to have this great banter back and forth of your certainly great wise experience. And of course, Ravi, you haven't told them you're a dancer, which is also a spiritual <laughs> practice. A spiritual practice. It is absolutely because it's it's about creating, right? Whenever you're doing partner dances, salsa or swing as a lead, you're constantly creating. And what you want to do is get in harmony with the music. And the ideal would be to have the music flow through you to manifest, to create the dance. The the other thing too, that, 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 that the parallel is, I started in physics and then moved to business. And that's where I realized that a lot of the concepts of how we understand the universe complexity and chaos theory is really how we work as individuals. And the, one of the keys is you can't control everything. You know, you've got to let go of this illusion that we can actually control it all. And you have to trust in the patterns and in the flow. And I think that's one of the challenges that, uh, in terms of how do you live consciously is letting go of the need to control. What do you mean, Robbie? I have my Excel spreadsheets. I have my computer. <laughs> Nothing ever changes in my life. It always goes according to plan, including this show, which clearly we, we planned so eloquently 10 days ago. And we said, let's just have a chat and make this show happen. Let's just do it. <laughs> Yeah. Let's do it. And we're going to talk about that uh, leaps of faith and how do you live consciously uh, once new stuff shows up? Because this show really came from you posting one post on Facebook. Is anybody else seeing what I'm seeing out there? And there were seven trends. And one of my 
passions was the, the number seven trend, which was spirituality and business. So yeah. if we'd have tried to control this and I meet a co-host and we're going to start a show, who knows? We'd both be maybe with different people having a different conversation. And yet we both opened up to this power greater than ourselves, this quantum consciousness, this this universal experience. And this show has been so easy. Yeah, and, and, and I mean, it's, it's about trust, right? And and next week's show is actually, we're gonna dive more into that, that leap of faith and how do you, you know, when do you trust it? How do you build that? I, one of the things I talk about is the risk muscle and how do you build that muscle, right? To be able to take those leaps of faith. And that's the other thing, these shows um, are, we're going to have topics that, that'll be a, a focus for each one. And also we're going to keep our eye on what's happening out there in the world because we want this to be relevant. We want this to make a difference for you. So um, one of the key things that we're going to be looking at is how can we tie in what's happening with the world and, and connect it so that there's something substantial that you can walk away with each time that you can say, okay, yeah, we can play with this. We can do something here. Well, I think we want our, our, our conversations about enjoying the journey. Mm -hmm. And we've both certainly taken a lot of interesting paths in our business, speaking, coaching, writing, um, in your case, parenting, that there's a lot of life that's happened. You know, in my case, you know, dating men with kids, that we have a lot of experience to draw on to help people understand the journey to live consciously. And how do we uh, use these conversations as learning lessons and learning opportunities and a safe place to play with what if i do this or what if i don't do this and uh you know how can one one choice change the course of the flow with our right. own life passion and our own purpose well and and that's one thing some an image came to me today this whole thing about living consciously it's a journey it's a practice they call it a practice because you got to practice it right and it struck me that the challenge with living consciously is all this stuff happens in life, right? I mean, we could live consciously if all we had to do was sit on our meditation cushions and, and you know, and breathe. Um, but all this stuff happens and it's like uh, waves. And the thing, the image that struck me is if you're in a little punt, if you're in a little dinghy, a little boat, a rowboat, and this wave comes, you're going to be sloshed all over the place. But I, I live in, uh, you live up on the mountains. I live in on the coast in, in Halifax. And we've got a lot of big container ships out here and or the cruise ships that come by. And, you know, the same waves hit them and nothing happens, you know, or if there's an impact with larger waves, it's much more gentle rocking. And I think as we practice this, as we go on our journey, we expand our base of presence. So it's like we grow from being this little punt, this little rowboat, and expand into much larger ship where we can be much more stable in, with more waves hitting us. And that's, that's what the practice is about. How do we expand that base of presence? And I think it's interesting for some people energetically, that's a going deeper. They, they root deeper into the earth. And um, I have another girlfriend that I talk about and, and deeper energetically doesn't work for her, but she feels uh, a higher. She, she wants to, to go yeah. up with her energy. So um, I'd invite, you know, listeners to think about their own presence and their energy. Is it, is it an expanding like you talk about in the boat? Is it a going deeper, a higher? There's no right or wrong. But as we explore presence, we get the opportunity to think about that and how we feel into the world from that particular place. Right. I mean, it's all unique for each of us. We've got to go our own journey, right? So we've these. this is a conversation. Now you've got to say, okay, how does this work for me? What can I do to make this? What can I apply in what way, right? And and you, you can't necessarily say, here is the path. Boom, 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 boom. It's what's your path. Yeah. So uh, today's show, Robbie, we were talking about wanting to talk about how to navigate in a world whipped up in fear. Uh, you don't have to turn on too many uh, social media channels or too much TV to uh, to come up with fear. And certainly, you know, we we represent North America, but we would invite our our global friends to to be a part of this, too, because we know that um, the world is kind of whipped up in fear. So we wanted to share some how to's of, of how to do this. And we've uh, teased teased the show with a few of them. So, Ravi, what's your one tip? How should we navigate this week of life whipped up in fear? 
Well, I mean, the first thing is to look at the, the, there's a lot of stuff that's happening in the world, whether, uh, you know, and it's a, so much is fear based, right? You don't have to go to the um, the the extremes of, of uh, attacks and such and, and whether internal or external. There's, there's also the political situations like Brexit, the, you know, the elections that you're having and concerns, some of the concerns that are happening on both sides there. And it can feel like you're out of control. The thing I think it comes back to is what is in your control? Instead of focusing on what you can't, let's take a look at what you can. And guess what? You can control yourself. You can control your reaction. So what can you do with that? Um, and uh, the simplest thing for me is when you start feeling the stress. And honestly, I think we can get hooked on it. You know, if you study the heart math material, every time we have a little stressor, there's 1,400 chemical, 30 hormonal changes we go through. And I think there's an addictive process there. So we have to break that. Um, so how do we switch it when we feel that response happening in us? The simplest thing is just breathe. Take a, a nice deep breath. That triggers what is called the relaxation response, which produces a whole bunch of healing chemicals that counteracts all the toxicity the stress does. Um, so what I do with some of my clients, they say, well, I can't, I, I can't do that. Everything's hitting me. I said, well, fine. In, on a crazy busy day at work, fine. Go to the bathroom, go in a stall, close the door, take a moment to breathe. And just, you know, do that. You may wind up going to the bathroom a lot at first, but you'll find <laughs> you can, you, you, you know, you, you, you start to feel the shift in your body and you, and you change from reacting to responding you become much much more resourceful as as you do that so it's what do you control it's yourself and you can control your reactions and start there uh once you do that you'll actually find you can impact or influence a lot more around you yeah i like to say uh, breathe and move your feet or breathe into your feet uh for those mm -hmm. people who who don't want to take the time to go to the bathroom. Although I do think that's a good tip. And, you know, in the middle of the show someday, I might just disappear because I got to go <laughs> break out the stress uh, that, you know, breathe into your feet. Just take mm -hmm. a moment and feel your feet on the ground and remember that you are always supported. Uh, sometimes that's a huge tip as well. You often see speakers, you know, we both are met through the National Speakers Association. They'll come up to the stage and they, they take a breath before they begin their presentation. What is that breath for you in your business? You know, you wake up in the morning and the kids are crazy and you're doing cereal and breakfast and getting them to school. Whoa, <sighs> breathe into your feet or you're going into that board meeting before you whip the door open. Can you just take a second and go the perfect person at the perfect time doing this right and perfect meeting? Breathe into your feet. And I in, in my breathing process, I think about it, not only the breathing, the stress into the earth, but also feeling that breathing of the earth back into me uh, yes. as a powerful tool for um, surviving this world of, of stress. And, you know, the image that popped into mind when you said that reminded me of something from Pretty Woman, the scene where he goes out and walks barefoot in the grass, right? Uh, that actually is amazingly healing to ground yourself. I mean, and we're, we're in summer now. Hello, we can go out. How often do we actually go on the grass, in the sand, well, on the grass and just barefoot, right? It, it's amazing how much of an impact that can have in terms of healing us, in terms of grounding us. And again, it doesn't have to be a long time. It mm -mm. doesn't. Some, you know, I, I can hear my friend, Holly, I don't have time. Two minutes, five minutes, where you're walking, you know, you park the car and as you walk into the house, you know, just make that extra little detour. Yeah. Um, so we had, we had another tip, Ravi, which I should share, which was seek to understand and ask questions. We're both on social media. We're grateful for all the support and friends we've had on social media. And last Friday, I don't know about you, but my feed was saying I'm off, like I'm done. Dallas, I'm, I'm like no more social media. And yet I think we can use social media as the place to ask candid, caring, compassionate conversations. Are you listening only to get your words out or but are you, or are you really listening to have a dialogue? And we had a couple sample questions for people to try on this week, which were, um, tell me what appeals to you about this. You know, if, if, if you're in a conversation with somebody, maybe you don't agree, 
but have the opportunity to let them share more. That was another tip. Tell me more about your right. and your particular point of view. Seek seek to understand versus being understood, especially in this time of transformational change. Because I, I, I know as you and I have explored the show, some of my thoughts about my life has have changed and evolved and I'm trying on new things. And I think the world is trying on new certainly new action. The more we can create a container for questioning lovingly each other on these new beliefs. And, and I think it's uh, the key to that is being curious. Yes, you may not agree, but let's start to understand where are they coming from? Why are they feeling that way? Uh, and the interesting thing is a lot of people who grab on to strong beliefs that are fear-based don't actually know. And that can be a very illuminating process for both people to really understand, not to explain why you would believe it. That. If they ask, that's fine. You can share. But to really be curious to understand where that's coming from, why they're so passionate about it. Because um, if we instead say, no, I disagree, boom, boom, you're instantly into that. But if you can create a way where you can understand where they're coming from, there's always a chance to build some bridges. Otherwise, all you're doing is just tearing each other down. And and it just it just builds on 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 stressors. And how can we get to a place in the world uh, in Centers for Spiritual Living? We say our mission is to build a world that works for everyone. How can we mm -hmm. build a world that works for everyone and be, be open and willing to say, you know, what? we don't have to agree on everything all of the time. And and and. You're free to, to live your life the way that you want to live it, and, and so am I. Uh, the more I have friendships like that, the more I learn, the more I grow, and I create peace in this place, my life. Yeah. And, and to me, it's, it's a sign of respect to try to understand where someone is coming from. You know, and, and a lot of times people get upset because they're not being respected. Well, are we respecting the others so if we can really seek to understand and be curious and understand why why they're coming from you know you're, you're not a drill sergeant digging into all of it you are just asking them so that you can understand where those opinions came from what 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 shaped them it opens a door for something don't know what but it opens a door yeah we we had a tip here also um choose to go within first and we'll have future shows on trust and trusting yourself and learning to listen to that still small voice within um as you know we were conceptualizing this show i think both of us had a little anxiety of what could this be and what does it look like and i think what's important that we share you know with listeners that we we are practicing that which we're sharing and we had that initial conversation where we shared all the excitement and we shared some of the challenges and what was your perspective and how this could work and then we stepped away from it and invited each other to go within and do our own work around how we felt and connect to that inner knower inner knowing within and then we regrouped on that conversation and i think if more of us living and leading our lives consciously gave permission for that vulnerability and permission for that space, we could have these conversations and uh, release the fear and step into to faithful, powerful conversations about where yeah. we want to go on this planet. Well, well part of that, it, it makes me think of, um, we're so used to being problem solvers in this world. Bam, bam, here's a problem solver, bam, bam. And what happens is we haven't invested the time to understand the problem. And so what we wind up doing is addressing the symptom and it may not be the root issue. And so the new problems pop up and, a, you know, a friend of mine says, we don't have the time to do it quickly. Yeah. Right. It's, we are so hardwired to just respond instead, stop, slow down. When I'm doing a lot of my, strategy work with organizations it's it, it drives them crazy because i won't let them jump to actions okay let's really look at what's underneath what are the root issues um and and let's tune in to some extent as well to what feels right what's the intuition and that can guide you in a totally different direction that's where real transformation happens whether it's personally in your own life or organizationally in um 
and and also in our case we made the decision to jump in it just felt right we're not sure still what's emerging but we're we're uh we're willing to go for the ride and let the universe lead this dance a little bit yeah and i i think it would be important for us to share too our, our question today is how to navigate a world whipped in fear and um i just want to put out there too that honoring the feelings that you are feeling right now feel the fear the concern the sadness maybe have a journal about it a short call with a trusted friend that type of thing that um, this isn't a place about bypassing your fears or your feelings but no. leaning into those fears and then creating the space for new things to emerge. So that would be a tip I think we should add, Ravi, is making sure that yeah. people feel comfortable to feel the fear and go forward anyway. I'm so glad that you said that because a lot of times we put labels on it, right? There's bad emotions like fear and anger. Those aren't bad, they're just emotions. And we need to, if we don't honor them, they will go underneath and they'll fester. And what we need to do is breathe into them honor them and as you do as you say journal find a friend you know i always say you know you got your lifeline call a friend we're going out for a beer we're going out for a coffee i'm gonna vent you're gonna sit there and smile and say nothing and i'm just gonna go bah! and i get it out right so how how can you use that or use a journal in that way it feels so much better it's not bad it's just human we have feelings there's no good feelings there's no bad feelings and if we have fear, if we have anger, those are real. Honor them, breathe into them. You're much more resourceful if you can breathe. Uh, it, uh, it saves you from turning blue. And, you know, and it will pass. And get also, if it's extreme, get support. A coach, a counselor, a therapist, if you need it. Get, if it's really extreme, you need that support. And, you know, doing the work that we've done, I think also knowing that there's a lot of support out there, you know, it doesn't have to be, you know, hours on a couch, you know, there's modalities that are, that are shorter and, and longer and affirmations and videos and all that, that we yeah. have more tools now than we've ever had before. And the world is waking up to um, inviting these conscious conversations. Yeah. And that's why we are here. It is. What a joy to have this opportunity to share with you, Ravi, and certainly with, with our, our growing friends around the world. So should we tell people how to get a hold of us if they do uh, want to have a, a chat between now and next week? Sure. Go ahead, Holly. You start. On my website is just Holly, H-O-L-L-Y, Duckworth, D-U-C-K-W-O-R-T-H.com. You can see my Twitter handle there, at H Duckworth. And uh, all my contact information is there at Twitter, Facebook, LinkedIn. I'm, and I'm not hard to find. Yeah. And I'm at ravitangri.com. Pretty easy. R-A-V-I-T-A-N-G-R-I.com. On Facebook, I'm real easy to find. Twitter is at ravitangri here. And uh, we're going to be back next week. Our show is not on Friday because Holly's got a very special event on Friday. So we're going to be on Thursday at the same time our usual time and what we're going to be talking about is how do you take that leap how how do you you know how do you know when to um step into that what's possible and we're going to be exploring that idea Fantastic. so thank you so much holly thanks ravi i'll see you soon um, yep and we will talk soon see you all next week folks bye-bye